Iron Man Tulsa 2020. Uh, right now, as we're recording this, it's been pushed to 2021, but I'm going to go ahead and put this video out there kind of to assess where you should be at as far as this particular race is concerned. Uh, this is based more on the terrain of that course uh, for the bike and the run. It might be a little bit different if the course is a little less hilly on the bike or a little more hilly on the run. So this isn't gospel for any Ironman races out there. It's very specific for Ironman Tulsa. So I'm putting this out there, even though currently in the state of affairs, uh, Ironman Tulsa 2020 has been pushed into May of 2021. But I want to put this video out there for everybody that, like myself, I've gone to the, I've deferred to the 2021 race. So I'll be there with you again, but I just want to kind of go over what I would suggest as a good point in time, about a month out to see where you should be and what you should be thinking about. So let's dive into it. So in addition to your training, so you're, you're obviously you're doing swim, bike, and run. Hopefully you're doing some strength training and stuff as well. But in addition to that, you should be checking out, you know, really honing in on nutrition. Did you find something that's really digestible, easy on your stomach, does the trick, gives you the energy, provides everything you need. Same with hydration. Uh, finalize your traveling logistics. So if you're a month out, making sure that you're, Airbnb is good, your VRBO is good, your hotel is good, everything's good with that. So just making sure you're crossing T's, dotting the I's, everything's set up, or if you don't have lodging, find it now because you're getting a little bit too close to a race a month out to really nail down traveling, that type of thing. And then finalizing your gear choices. So, you know, bike shoes, run shoes, triathlon gear, triathlon suit, wetsuits, all the stuff <clears throat> that's on the periphery. You need to have figured out what you're going to be using and make sure that you've got the right gear uh, to get you to race day. Because at this point in time, you're running, your window is getting really short on if you need to order anything else, you know, nutrition, hydration, anything like that. So whatever you got to get, get it now and just be ready. So if you've been watching my videos or if you're one of my club members or one of my athletes, you should know by now what all gear you should be looking for. So make sure you've got all your choices finalized and kind of dialed in. So as far as volume goes, this is what I'm recommending. you. So you're starting to prep for the race. So you're starting to look at the prep and taper. So about a month out, you're reaching your peak, and then we're going to kind of start declining on volume. You're going to keep the, a little bit of intensity as we're going, but there's going to be a nice point of where your fitness should maintain. So you've kind of got it to the best point you're going to get because if you try to increase your fitness at this point in time, you're doing a little bit more damage than good. And especially as the closer you get to the race, if you're still trying to up your, FAT, up your FTP, trying to up your VO2 and all that kind of stuff, you need that recovery and you're not going to get it before race day. So right now your fitness, you want it to plateau, you want to get your fatigue to go down, and you want your, your recovery to go up. So at this point in time, <clears throat> we're looking at the volume is going to be getting a little bit lower. So as far as the swim, you're looking at 2 to 3K per workout, um, 7 to 9K per week. So that's really not too wild and crazy out there. So maybe, you know, usually, like I said, a 3K, maybe a 4K swim in there at this point in time is your highest. But once you start getting closer to race day, uh, you're definitely going to taper on the swims and the total volume of the swims and the intensity of the swims. On the bike, right now at this point in time, it should be in an 89-mile long ride. Probably done one or two centuries already. Maybe this week is your last century ride. So after that, you're looking to kind of dial down in the distance of bike rides. Maybe some of you are disappointed in that, and maybe some of you are ready not to be doing as long of bike rides at this point in time. So total for the week, you're about 140 to 160 miles per week. So you're breaking it up to three to four rides per, per week. And like I said, the longest being kind of an 80, 90 mile work. So that's a full for that training. On the run, at this point in time, you're 15 to 19 miles for your long run. So maybe you've just done your 20, 21 mile, miler or however you're structuring your program. So you've done that longest run or you will this week, you know, that last month out, and then you should be starting tapering in your long run distance. So total run per week, about 30 to 40 miles per week. Uh, especially, like I said, as you're going getting closer to race day, that's gonna go lower and lower. So I'm looking at about for what I'd recommend for athletes, 15 to 16 hours per week total for training. So that's inclusive of any kind of strength training you're doing, swim, bike, and run, anything like that. So at this point in time, like I said, you, you should have peaked already or been pretty close. Maybe this is going to be your peak week. 
uh, you're getting about 17, 18 hours in per week. And then after that, you're looking for 15 to 16 hours. And then you're kind of tapering down each week as you get closer to race day. At this point in time, uh, once you've hit that peak, and then you're going into the kind of race prep and taper phase, I kind of recommend the end of strength only sessions. Uh, do keep up, you know, stretching and uh, flexibility, uh, mobility, that kind of stuff. But if you're really, you know, if you're out there doing uh, maybe a CrossFit style workout or you're doing other uh, very high weight or just stuff that you need recovery from as far as strength only training, this is the point in time to start tapering off of that. So you really want to allow your body to recover. If you're still doing strength specific standalone intense workouts, then it's going to come, it's going to get in the way of being able to recover after race day. So the focus should be on recovery and retaining fitness. So if you're not recovering, if you're not eating right, you're not doing your daily nutrition right, if you're not recovering either, you know, making sure you get enough sleep, if you're not getting uh, enough just rest in general, if you're totally stressed out, if other things, you know, life is going on, uh, and that's getting in the way too, uh, you need to make sure you're kind of buttoning that stuff up because you want to be relaxed, you want your, your body to be able to absorb everything you've done to it, so when you get the race day, you're not going to be overtrained or under-recovered by the time you get the race day. So when you get there, you don't want to be tired, you don't want to be sore, you don't want to be worn out, you want to be fresh mentally fresh, physically fresh, and ready to attack the race day. So hopefully this helps you out. A uh, quick little rundown of where I think athletes should be about the one month. I mean, you're, you're either hitting your longest week this week, or you've already hit it, and then you're starting to taper in the race day. Um, usually my race planning, depending on if you're an advanced athlete, an intermediate athlete, a beginner athlete, uh, the race prep phase where you're kind of tapering down in, in volume, you're still doing a little bit of work, it's usually about three to four weeks out from uh, for a full Ironman race day. So take this into consideration when you're looking at your plan. And if you have any questions, as always, put them in the comments of the videos. I get back to every one of the comments. Uh, as long as I get an alert from it on either Facebook or YouTube or wherever you put your comments from, or if you email me back for one of the group emails, I will be happy to address any questions you have. So good training out there. Do the best you can. And Happy, happy training out there, and uh, we will see you on race day.